school, just, you know, every other kind of outcast was already a bit ahead of me in regards to checking them out and stuff. And I'll admit, like, my introduction to them was literally Welcome to the Black Parade, the song. Um, so I was two albums, you know, I, I, I kind of got into them on the third album. Um, but I went and bought both um, Three Cheers and the Black Parade in HMV at the same time. And I actually didn't know which way around they were released because uh, they were still playing um, I'm Not Okay quite often on the telly. So I kind of thought that was still a, a new song. I think it's like the little surface underneath, you know, once you go like scratch a little bit deeper, like start reading the lyrics and stuff, it's like, there is like a depth to it, you know? So whether you're the kind of person who gets lost in music and spends hours obsessing over little things or listens to music casually or just listens to music because it's cool. They covered every single bass back in the day. Not many people know this, but obviously I'm naturally, I've got naturally brown hair. And most people, when they discovered our band, I had blonde hair. Um, and the first time I dyed my hair blonde and kept it that way was because I sung for a My Chemical Romance tribute band for one night. And yeah, basically there was uh, a local festival um, and it was, oh, I, can't, I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called like Swanosphere or something. It was just like some stupid thing. And basically the whole thing was every band was doing a tribute to another band. Um, and like genuine, like we, I wasn't in a band at the time. Like I a hundred percent would have never agreed to do it because I, there was nothing to even ask. I wasn't in a band, you know, but just the concept of doing a My Chemical Romance tribute band was just too much to pass up. So yeah, so we did that, man. And it was just like, Oh, it was so good. I felt like the coolest guy on earth for half an hour. I, I got to give it to Gerard Way. Like, oh my God, the chops, like the vocals. Oh my God. Like it, people don't understand just how much he does. I feel like, obviously he's a, he's a brilliant vocalist, but I feel like he's such an artist. I feel like the music always felt like kind of second in a way. Just, I remember kind of, you know, being, jumping in his skin for 30 minutes and doing this set. I just remember thinking to myself like, even if it was art first, music second, the dude was a brilliant musician, you know, and his voice was un unreal. At their crux, My Chemical Romance are like a punk band, really. A an evolved punk band. You know, you listen to, um, it basically, you know, the first two records, it just felt like this frantic emo punk band. But I feel like Holden Absence uh, is not at all a punk band. You know, there's, there's a very... There's a, a very big difference between our mega evolutions, you know, but I feel like when you get to, you know, the first, the starting point is very much just emotion, the Black Parade, uh, Cancer, the song. Um, you know, when I was, when I was young, um, I, I lost my auntie to cancer around about the same period that I was getting into alt music. Um, and I, I physically couldn't listen to that song for so long because I felt like, it was too close to home anyway, you know, regardless. But, um, but at the same time, I, I just kind of didn't understand how somebody could put themselves in the shoes of a, of like a dying cancer patient and write a song and then step out of those shoes. I felt like it was kind of just gormless in a way. I felt like really like it was just something I couldn't put. I, yeah, whatever. But having said that, years later now, you know, I, I, I do understand its presence on the album and I do understand it's one of the best most haunting ballads of the 21st century, you know? And, and I think Marigold is a song that was definitely like written in the mold of, of cancer. It's nowhere near as good, of course, but like just the idea of this song coming into the middle of an album and just kind of stripping everything back and just letting you feel this emotion, you know? And, and one thing I, I did just stumble on then thinking about it as well, Holden Absence is lyrically very much <clears throat> me portraying characters, me kind of living through uh, experiences I've had, but putting them in the words of other stories, you know. And uh, Cancer is a, is a very good example of a song that does that. So I went with Killjoys at number three. I, uh, I love that album. And I do think listening back to it now as a, an older person with a more expansive musical taste, you know, there's songs on there that sound like... Um, you know, The Cure. There's, there's, there are songs that, that sound like The Cure on there. There's songs that sound like um, uh, Pulp. <laughs> you know, there's like, there's this weird, like, there's a lot of, of odd kind of, like, just, I don't know, different musical inspirations, you know. Um, but I, I think that album, I got to be honest, you know, when that album first kind of dropped or, uh, or like uh, got announced, I was like really gutted because 
no, no, no. I just felt like the opposite of what I loved in my chem. You know, it was very on the nose. And and I did. I don't think I realized at the time just how on the nose they were as a band. Um, but uh, it's, it's a classic song now, you know. But back in the day, I was really like scared of that album because of the first single. But Sing is like a timeless classic. Um, uh, Bulletproof Heart is, is a timeless classic. So is like Planetary Go. But then the deep cuts, like you said, like earlier, like Summertime, Scarecrow, uh, save yourself i'll hold them back destroyer like there's so many good songs on that album and, and i think if anybody you know if anybody's watching this who kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of my chem because i feel like maybe a few people did go back and listen to that, that album and really like just just look at the track list you know it's all killer so number two is ooh, three cheers i just i just felt like that artwork is just timeless that's like put it in a museum level artwork, like literally some of the best artwork of the 21st century. If not in my, my musical, in the musical world, I just think it's so good, you know? And like, when you think like, you know, it's like romance and blood. It's like, that's so cool. It's just two things. It's all you, all you see in that photo is just like two very powerful things. And that's basically what My Chemical Romance's music was, just romance and a whole lot of blood, you know? Like I said about them kind of being more of a punk band, I really, really feel that in this album. There's some moments of just like, just uh, unbridled, like viciousness, you know, it's just like, it rips out of the, the speakers at you uh, for a lot of these songs. Um, and it's a very, very like consistent album as well. I, I don't think there's really any songs that drop the ball at all on this. Um, and I also like how it's not a very top heavy album. It, it starts with uh, Helena, right? But then it, it kind of, it takes a minute before another single kind of comes in. You know, you've got like um, the end, you know what they do to guys like us in prison. Um, blah, give them hell, kid, you know? And, and I feel like it doesn't start like a safe album starts. You know, you've got either that bass riff coming in or you've got like that little plunky piano thing coming in. And in the first few songs, I, I do think that was, that was quite a risk to me. Um, and, and I really respect that because um, at that point in their career, you know, they weren't in the position to really be risking losing anybody, you know? Um, and then with the Black Parade, then they had the, the permission to kind of just take unreal risks, you know? The perfect album to me in every way. It does everything. Uh, Gerard's vocal vocals are unbelievable. His lyrics are unbelievable. And the first maybe four songs were just kind of risky class tracks, you know? Um, and then honestly, as well as I've matured, in terms of, you know, as a person with a music taste of my own, but also as I've grown maybe more, a little bit more tired of other songs because I loved them back in the day, you know, Disenchanted, Sleep, you know, there's some brilliant, brilliant, like latter half tracks as well. So I think it does everything. I love the chemistry between Frank and Ray as well. I think having back to that punk thing, you know, I think Frank is like the dictionary definition of a punk, like literally like, you know, like at least, a you know, not like a post like you know 70s 80s you like like a modern punk you know and and he was just the coolest human ever when i was younger and then ray is just like this really clever like melodically he's just you know he's, he's a musical genius that dude and and hearing both their little guitars kind of blend in completely different ways underneath a vocalist that is just like pouring out this artistic emotion just like yeah i'm gonna stop gushing but uh oof. 